This is an interesting chapter on what can be described as an issue with American Christianity. The church becomes something little more than a cultural experience rather than a mobilized army for the Lord of Hosts. Rainer defines churchianity this way, practicing our church and religious beliefs according to human standards rather than biblical guidelines. Ouch! Uh, but he goes back to the biblical passages of what the church is all about, beginning with the sacrificial and functional teaching that we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It says this, Now that you are the body of Christ and individual members of it, and God has placed these in the church. How awesome is our responsibility, not just to show up on Sunday at 11 o'clock, but that we function as the earthly body of our Lord until He returns. So we are to function, we are to sacrifice, and we are to practice vibrant Christianity. Rainer then describes five symptoms of churchianity. Uh, the first one is this, church is a spectator sport. Like spectators at a ball game, they don't really get involved in the action on the field at all. The teams who have uh, trained and practiced are the ones doing the work, while we just watch and enjoy. As Ken is casting a vision of an equipping culture, fundamentally it means that everyone has a part to play, and being a spectator is not an option. The second one is, uh, church is about me. Uh, here is where Rainer talks about the church developing a country club mentality. Uh, we pay our dues and expect to be served well. Uh, this is not the picture of biblical Christianity. Biblical church life is about serving, about sacrificing, about giving. It's about putting the needs of others ahead of our own needs. Churchianity is about being served, receiving, getting our way, and insisting on our own needs and wants before others. The third characteristic is that church is about dwelling on its flaws. Uh, this can easily develop when we embrace an attitude of criticism and complaining. I love this illustration that he gave about marriage. Uh, no one would expect a couple to have a good relationship if we don't see the best in our spouse or love our spouse in spite of any flaws and imperfections or complain and nag about shortcomings. We married for better or for worse. This illustration sure hits home as it relates to the church. And we're saved by grace, and we need to extend that same grace to others. It's an insult to the people of this church to have some who uh, badmouth the pastor or the choir, the deacons or Wednesday night dinners or some other ministry of the church. Those who know that we are not perfect should extend grace to others knowing that they are not perfect either. Uh, the fourth characteristic of churchianity is the church has low expectations. What does it take to become a member of this church? What is actually required? Well, we would say faith in Christ and evidence of believers' baptism by immersion. That's about it. We don't expect or even insist that uh, members would attend something like the connection class or join a Bible study or small group or volunteer in the children's department or even tithe. We hope people get involved, but we never insist on these activities as expectations of members of this body. Our fear is that we will have higher expectations. If we do that, uh, people will stop coming. So we embrace a low expectation model. The fifth characteristic of churchianity is that the church has a cliquish membership. Most churches have friends that hang out with each other. Uh, we're always open to, uh, to new people, but what is, is, that a, is that a reality? Uh, going to uh, some of our classes are like attending someone else's family reunion. It's nice enough. Uh, the food's good to eat. Uh, there's some nice conversations, but you really don't fit in. Uh, Rainer says that these uh, cliques become uh, an informal power group in the church, an alliance of older, longer-term members who control how much these newbies of the church, you know, what they can do. Avoidance of change and the desire to maintain control, uh, you know, flow out this of this prime emotion, which we would call fear. 
You know, Rainer says these traps are in the church due to two main reasons. One, there can be a formal structure that inhibits meaningful involvement. Uh, maybe we've never done it that way before. Or two, members make a conscious decision not to function as a biblical church, and we just let them follow down this unhealthy path. So, discuss in your groups this week where King's Grant may fit in this particular chapter. Where do you see our church falling into these traps of churchianity, these characteristics? What are the expectations of membership at King's Grant? What might happen if we up the responsibility of being a member here? And uh, what compromises are we willing to allow? How's the click situation here? Is it hard to get into a small group or the family life of the church? How are we as a class or as individuals breaking down barriers and walls that keep people at arm's length? What would it take to have King's Grant function like a biblical church? Not just a few, the 20% who do 80% of the ministry, but getting everyone involved in kingdom work here in this place. What commitments are you willing to make this week? Hey, thank you for watching this video and having this discussion in your class. May God bless your church conversations as well as your class discussion as we strive toward serving together for the kingdom's sake.